uh, Subhash for uh, being here as part of uh, Perspectives on Talent. Um, for our uh, viewers and listeners, uh, Subhash has been a HR leader and a line and business leader for many years across industries, uh, technology, finance, manufacturing, high tech, and so on and so forth. So it'll be interesting, Subhash, to hear from you, uh, I think, on two aspects. So one aspect is about uh, the similarities and differences between how HR people and CEOs look at talent uh, and are there similarities and are there differences? And I think the second aspect will be your own experiences with talent so far in the you know 30 plus years of your career. And what do you see going ahead? What What's going to change? Uh, thank you, Vimal. Uh, pleasure to be here and to have this conversation with you. And thanks for the nice introduction as well. I think the first thing I will say is, you know, in, I'll give you an example or at least an anecdote. Right. When I, you know, switched uh, fairly early in my career after about seven, eight years, when I switched to a new company and went to a new boss, I met him in a room which uh, looked very much like a conference room. It was empty. It was totally nothing. No, you know, maybe a laptop was there in a corner, but no other papers, nothing else. Person was just sitting there. It was a CEO and I was joining as HR leader. And uh, so he asked me, hey, HR leader, I'm not an HR guy. Tell me what, how, what will you do? So he said, take a week, come back and then tell me. So I came back and gave him a perfect, uh, nice, technically correct HR thing of how different policies, different things, great structures, pay structures, policies, the whole lot and saying, you know, how we will integrate and how it will be phased out and with the least disruption, communication, perfect HR plan. And uh, he listened very patiently. He said, okay, I'm not an HR guy. I'm assuming that Paul, everything you said is all the right things. But as a business leader, just tell me, how will any of this add to either the top line or bottom line? Right. Okay. <laughs> and at that stage in my career, I'll confess, you know, I was a little stunned and I, I didn't know what to say. I said, you know, this, this is all right. I mean, if everything, everybody has to come together, everything, consistency, coherence, everything, you know, commonality, all kinds of things. And right. he said, yeah, all of that is fine, but how will it add to top line or bottom line? I think that is the significant difference mm. in an approach or a perspective between a business leader and a HR leader. And subsequently, when I've been fortunate to be in business leadership roles, et cetera. That is the thought which would come back to me when I had my HR person come and make mm -hmm. suggestions and proposals, you know, perfect, technically perfect, procedurally right, all the right formats, all the right, you know, terminology. Right. But then the perspective of how is this impacting the business? I think that is one thing which is the difference I noticed early enough. Right, right. The other, the other thing, Subhash, is also about the language. And, you know, when I talk to you know many business leaders and HR leaders, somewhere there is a, you know, I would almost say a difference in the way they approach a conversation, you know. I don't know whether you've noticed that and whether you've picked up and in your experience some things around that. I, I would put it a little difference. I think, you know, the difference is the HR perspective is always on the process. Right the formats, the templates, the language, the definitions, the process, right. and the business perspective is in the outcomes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, of late, there is much more, you know, apart from the old uh, thing of seat at the table for right. HR, which is, you know, dead house, which has been flogged yeah. enough. The other thing, HR is almost, you know, kind of uh, defensive mm -hmm. in always trying to justify and build a stronger thing is, that this whole thing is very objective. It is a science and there is a business benefit. Right. Very often in leadership or in talent, etc. I think we are kidding ourselves if we say that the whole thing is objective and it's a science and mm -hmm. it is, you know, very tangible, quantified kind of a thing. So trying to show that is almost a defensive overcompensation right. in trying to say that, you know, we are doing this, we are doing this, and mm -hmm. this is how it comes. And that's a very tenuous link to make that causal effect or a relationship between your talent processes or leadership development processes and business outcome, or even the effectiveness of the individual Sorry. is a very tenuous link at best. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, the, I think the desperation to show that is, is sometimes a little amusing. Hmm. <laughs> to put it mildly, yeah. I think there should be confidence yeah. that there's a structure, there is whatever it is, we are going to make all of these efforts. 
but then any outcome is not a single cause driven correct it is not just in a talent it is not just in a ability it is not just your right development inputs it is not just the right project assignments it's not just the right you know guidance or leadership or supervision mm-hmm. that an individual is given it's a combination of all of these and sometimes yeah. business circumstances also i mean external circumstances can change results can be different sometimes external circumstances can be to your favor and you can get great results even without that much right. actual effort so yeah. acknowledging that this is a somewhat ambiguous and nebulous space mm. but what is best intent best effort right i mean you cannot take an absolute person with you know very little innate talent and ability and with the world class absolutely best leadership and talent development processes yeah. you cannot make that person a star correct at the correct. same way you cannot wait for you know getting the star and then saying my mm. processes are the inter- it's a combination of all of this and acknowledging that and acknowledging that there is you know best intent best effort and you know combined effort and at some points of time accepting that there will be surprises both ways correct i think that confidence is what uh, sometimes is lacking in individuals you know in trying to show that there is an effort yeah. or there is an outcome which is coming from my effort yeah. there is never so, one training program or leadership so, program which is going to develop a star yeah, they, you know they, that and they, i know that correct yeah so that's interesting because you know one of my bosses used to say that you know when you put together a proposal you should be clear about two things you know one at the end of the day it's a leap of faith and a little bit of luck and you should be willing to acknowledge that because you know you don't really have absolutely. a perfect answer and uh, you know and the second thing is said that it exactly. is okay to say when somebody asks you how did you set this number or this target say i don't know the answer you know he just took a gamble and you know it seems to work as long as it works it's fine you know why worry about it too much kind of thing so yeah yeah, so, yeah. yeah but i but i like that you know piece about overcompensation you're saying and uh, the fact that you know uh, some hr folks at least try to do that from time to time but a slightly different aspect to watch uh, you know in, in in your experience as a business leader what have you loved about you know uh, maybe a couple of examples around you know this is the kind of insight hr leader came across or hr person came across around specifically around talent and as a business leader you really loved it and it's like you know this is something which is real value to me i think you know the first thing that person should do who or an hr leader should do when he goes into a ceo's meeting or a ceo's meeting or a leadership meeting from a perspective of just hr yeah. and if he or she is going to only speak up or express an opinion when it relates to people or people policies then yeah. i think that's a total loss right i think this is an intelligent individual with an understanding or a deeper insight of people and processes and you know in the organization but the primary perspective should be effectiveness in the organization success of the organization and i think that perspective when it comes when some people come they come bring a com- combination of three things right to me in my mind you know the great hr leaders for with whom i've had the pleasure of working or you know been delighted to partner with is somebody who knows you know you take for granted table stakes or ground stakes is hr functional understanding and the ability to oversee the running of the hr function in a non disruptive consistent friendly you know everything which is right it is not a source of complaint it's a hygiene factor for their emotional maturity in understanding individuals business leaders because you're talking in a successful organization you're talking of a group of prime donors yeah yeah and the advantage the hr leader has is he's not or she is not one of the prime donors who's competing for turf or with each other correct potentially for the ceo's job or you know for whatever rewards are out there so if that is the perspective the hr person has 
he or she has to be an equal and equal member with an emotional intelligent and understanding and maturity to know and see those dynamics and build relationships with all of them based on trust right so then that insight which comes the perspective which comes with that mm-hmm. is has very little to do with hr per se right. it is almost the wise counselor kind of a you know coach life coach work coach whatever right. that kind of a perspective and the third part is business understanding what are critical drivers where is the business going not what is happening today and how do i measure it with a rear view or a you know view on the past performance yeah. past performance as we know not only in investment but everywhere else is not necessarily a predictor of future performance right. okay so i think we have to be very clear that the hr leader has a business understanding to know what is key drivers what is there and mm-hmm. where is the organization going what are capabilities what are gaps or what are challenges which are going to right. be there so if somebody brings these three then i am telling you it's a delight to work with that kind you know somebody it could be the proportions or abilities may be there but mm-hmm. unless these three primary aspects are very much there it's a challenge and sometimes the worst ones you'll see are the perfect hr leaders the, you know the 20% mm-hmm. is absolutely fine and they almost think that right. the other two are not there to see Right. and i think that's the other end of the spectrum the worst right. hr leader in my opinion correct right. so so last question subhas quickly uh, what do you see changing on the talent front you know uh, going forward are there other dramatic changes you are seeing as a business leader i think one part which everybody is saying is i think in terms of the way work is going to change the nature mm-hmm. of work you know is it going to be how much is work from home how much is in presence in person etc there's going to be a fair amount of that i won't claim to be an expert it's mm-hmm. a challenge i mean both sides you know depending on who you last year and how articulate they are you could be swayed both ways yeah, yeah. it's a one by one so school says that you know after next year once the covid vaccine is there and it goes life will be back to normal the other side people say you know work has changed the nature of work has changed irreversibly and forever i don't know which way that will go yeah but agents if there is going to be a reset of calibration then there are going to be a, like people say you know the recovery will not be u or l or v it could very much be the k shaped recovery which is the differentiation between the organizations which will succeed and the differentiation between the organizations who won't, which will not make it so it is going to be a divergence like a k yeah. and if that happens then understanding what does it take for your organization mm-hmm. to be on the upper curve and not the lower curve of the k, right. line of the k right. i think that is important and so if anything that will be the challenge it may be very different from industry to industry from the maturity of the organization so i don't know if there is a one you know kind mm. of a answer for everybody in every industry in every stage of their life cycle it will be different but i think if if the men are going to be separated from the boys to use mm. a, you know slightly politically incorrect yeah. this <laughs> phrase if that is what the k shaped recovery is going to mean uh-huh. then the hr leaders ability to you know make sure that their organization is among the men i think will be important mm. that will be critical great thanks subhash thank you for those inputs i think that was a lovely conversation and some great inputs for our listeners so thank you very much thanks thanks vimal nice talking to you